If you're new to graphic design, then you may be unfamiliar with what the different types of design are, why they're used, and how they're made. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief overview of what vector design is in particular, and how you can use Inkscape to create it. This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and today I'll be explaining how Inkscape works in five minutes or less. Inkscape is a free and open source vector graphics editor, similar to Adobe Illustrator. The graphical format you may be most familiar with would probably be the raster format, where you're working with a bunch of individual colored boxes known as pixels. This describes things like photographs and JPEG images. Vector graphics aren't made of pixels, though. They're a series of mathematical equations that dictate the properties of a graphic on an X and Y axis. The benefit of working with vector graphics is that they're easier to manipulate and you can enlarge them infinitely without quality loss. This makes vectors ideal for things like logos and app icons, where you'll need to use the same design in a variety of different sizes. Vector graphics can also be used to create things like characters and mascots, digital illustrations, menu icons for the web, and they can even be used in combination with raster images to create advertisements, headers for social media, or anything else you'd like. My favorite tool for creating vector graphics is Inkscape, and on this channel you'll find hundreds of tutorials for learning how to use Inkscape to create things like logos, icons, posters, textures, and more. When you launch Inkscape for the first time after downloading it, you may notice that it doesn't quite look the same on your screen as it does on mine when following along with one of my tutorials. You can change this by going to Edit, Preferences, Interface, and Theme, and ticking on the boxes to use a dark theme along with the symbolic icons. This is not something that's necessary, but it just may be easier for you to follow along with my lessons if things look the same on your screen as they do on mine. The Tools menu on the left-hand side of the screen allows you to create vector objects like squares, circles, stars, and polygons. And you can even use tools like the Bezier pen and the freehand tool to draw your own vector shapes. You can then edit the structural properties of those shapes using the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, which allows you to change the contours of individual lines and the key points of the design, otherwise known as nodes. You can add nodes, remove nodes, and even change the type of node you're working with. You can then give those shapes whatever color you want using the color palette at the bottom of the screen, or you can choose your colors by RGB or hex code by opening up the fill and stroke menu. You can even fill your objects with the gradient, which is basically a transition between two different colors. The path menu at the top of the screen is a series of path operations that allows you to take objects that you've already created and turn them into new objects based on how you make them interact with each other. You can unify them together, subtract them from each other, use the intersecting area between them to create a new object, and more. There's even a more advanced feature known as Live Path Effects which allows you to manipulate your vector objects even further. Inkscape also has a powerful text editor built in that allows you to flow text inside of objects, wrap it around objects, and even warp it into different shapes. And there's countless other features in Inkscape that make it a powerful tool, like texture masking and clone stamping. Once you have a solid understanding of how all of this works, you can create some really impressive designs. There really are no limitations to what you can create with Inkscape. It's just as powerful as any other vector graphics tool out there, commercial or otherwise. I've personally been using Inkscape as my primary tool for over a decade to design logos for my clients and graphics for my own website. I even have an online course called the Inkscape Masterclass where I go over every single tool and feature in Inkscape and explain how it works. It's kind of like a user manual, but in video format where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And it may be helpful in giving some context to my lessons here on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you're interested in checking that out. Otherwise, if you're just curious about seeing what Inkscape is capable of and maybe dabbling around with it a bit, then feel free to check out any of the hundreds of tutorials I have on this channel. I even have a beginner's playlist that would be ideal for first-time users. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below, and as always, Thanks for watching.